let us start with the prayer om sahana bhavatu sahano bunaktu sahaviryam karvavahai tejasvina vaditam astu ma vidvishavahai om shanti 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 So our topic for discussion today is fracture of tibia and fibula. Tibial shard fractures are the most common long bone fractures and they are famous for high incidence of open fractures. Most of the all long bone fractures, you know, the most common of all long bone fractures is the fracture tibia and fibula. Next common to the intercapsular fractured neck of the femur. Now it is more controversial, exceeded only by the fractured neck femur. Its one third surface is subcutaneous and hence the incidence of open fracture is high. Now distal one third has a deficient blood supply and a fracture in this area is known for delayed union and non-union bonded above and below by the hinge joints and hence no malunion is acceptable in fracture sharp tibia. Conservative treatment was the mainstay and is now reserved for the low energy stable the simple undisplaced or less displaced fractures. In our, in our days conservative treatment was the gold standard. Now the operative treatment is indicated for most of the fractures with the high energy trauma nowadays. Now did you know the isolated tibial fractures they account for the 23% only whereas both tibia and fibular fractures they account for 77% of the uh, cases. 77% of the tibial fractures are closed fractures and 23% of the tibial fractures, they are open fractures. And the fifth important thing, the common site for the tibial fracture due to the indirect force is the region of isthmus. Now coming to the mechanism of injury as seen in this particular picture, road traffic accident accounts for 37.5%. The sports injuries accounts for 24.5%. 7% assault 4.5% and fall the rest all the cases. Now the direct violence due to the road traffic accident most common mode of injury that is fall assault etc. Open fractures are common in this mode of injury that is road traffic accident. The indirect violence due to fall twisting forces due to the sports injury usually cause spinal fractures. Alice has classified fracture both bone leg in three grades minor, moderate, and major. Now, the features of minor grade fractures include they are undisplaced, not angulated, minor combination, and minor open fractures. The features of moderate grade, uh, grade fractures include there is a total displacement as shown in this particular uh, picture the small degree of comminution and minor open wound. And the major fracture grades includes the complete displacement, major comminution and major open wounds. Now you can see in this particular diagram suggestive of the major grade tibial fractures. Now the sharpness classification takes into account the soft tissue injuries too. And that is classified into four groups. C0, simple fracture with no soft tissue injuries that is sharpness c0 classification c1 mild to moderate fractures with superficial abrasions only c2 moderately severe fractures with deep contusions and c3 severe fractures with severe destruction of the soft tissues now many classification like OTA 
Chalne and Gastillo and Delon classification for the open fractures are there for the fracture both bone leg. Now, what holds the tibial fracture together? So, it is the intact fibula 1, 2, the interosseous membrane, which is it remains intact, and 3, the surrounding calf muscles. Coming to the clinical features in these fractures, the common symptom is pain and obvious sign is the deformity apart from other features of fractures. No damage to the blood vessels and the nerve is not that common, but the fibular neck fractures may endure the lateral popliteal nerve. And if the posterior tibial vessels are injured, there could be the compartment syndrome which may develop. So investigation wise radiographs for the acute cases require only AP and lateral view. If you look at this particular picture. For the delayed cases, AP view, lateral view and oblique view may be required. Knee joint above and ankle below should be included as is evident from the above x-ray. Now, do you know the fibula bears approximately 12% of the body weight that you should not forget. The methods of treatment includes the conservative management is done in majority of the cases and consists of following options. One is long leg plaster cast indications being the most closed fractures and undisplaced fractures. Now the fractures with minor or moderate uh, displacement fractures with the minor or moderate displacement young adults and low energy trauma the methods of reduction in the displaced fractures include there are two methods of close reduction. In first, the patient is supine and is under general anesthesia. With the limb held parallel to the table and the fracture is reduced by traction and contra-traction method as shown in this particular diagram. Now, a long leg cast is applied after reduction. The disadvantage of this technique is due to the gravitational force posture angulation may develop at the fracture site. In the second, the most and more commonly followed method is patient is supine or uh, sitting as you can see in this particular diagram. The patient is brought to the edge of the table and both legs are kept dangling. Now through a halter as you can see in this particular picture, the clinician holds the leg of the patient and manipulates the fracture using both of his hands. Now a long leg cast is then put with the knee in slight flexion and the ankle at 90 degree. The advantage of this method are the traction and counter traction do not require the services of any assistant. The patient's own weight of the leg provides the traction through the gravity. It is easy to compare with the normal leg regarding the accuracy of the close reduction by looking at the control of rotation and the angle. The criteria for the acceptable reduction includes the rotation should be nearly perfect and that can be seen by taking the x-ray, the AP view, ankle and the knee. In AP view, both the ankle and knee should be looking AP. Lateral view, both the ankle and knee should look uh, lateral. Now the ankle and knee joint surfaces should be parallel always. Then third, acceptable various and Vulcus angulation is just 5 degree in AP view. Anterior or posterior angulation in lateral view is it should not be more than 10 degrees. Even the 50% apposition is acceptable provided there is no rotation. And shortening of 5 to 7 millimeter is acceptable. Now did you know that Bowler of Vienna was the first person to use and popularize the long leg cast for the tibial fractures. Now post reduction there is something known as concept of vase plaster technique correction vase plaster correction. Now post reduction angulation of the fracture tibia 
which is in the plaster cast the technique of a wage, uh, wage correction of the plaster will enable the surgeon to correct the residual angulation without removing the original plaster cast now actually this was what we were taught in our days nowadays most of the cases are being treated surgically so we hardly need but then for the sake of completion you all must know about this concept of waste plaster correction now in the post reduction radiograph the direction of angulation whether medial or lateral anterior or posterior is noted then an attempt is made to correct the angulation by either opening a vase or closing a vase in the cast now in the open vase plaster correction the plaster is cut at the opposite end of the angulation and opened thereby correcting the angulation as you can see in this particular uh, x-ray in the closed vase plaster technique the vase of a plaster is removed at the apex of angulation and the plaster cast is closed correcting the angulation now the open waste technique is preferred over the closed waste technique because of the chance of skin being caught within the plaster edges in the closed technique after either procedure the plaster cast is completed and the check radiograph is taken to confirm the correction after reduction of the fractures and application of a long leg cast for two to three weeks a total baloney cast which is molded around the tibial condyle and patella in a fashion of patellar tendon bearing processes is given that is what is the Sarbinto's total contact baloney plaster cast ptb cast or brace we call it that is applied and the movement of the knee joint and the weight bearing is permitted now Sarbinto reported a union rate of 97.5 percent and the average healing time was 14 to 15 weeks so the advantages of Sarmento's ptb cast includes it allows early knee movement two sitting can be permitted early three easy of ambulation for the patients with the bilateral fractures four decreases the incidence of delayed union and non-union now the functional cast braces now this allows movements of both ankle and knee joint while the ptb cast includes ankle joint so nowadays people are using the functional cast brace as well now pin above and below of the fractures here the two statement beans are passed above and below the fracture site and incorporated in the plaster cast now this method however is no longer in use except in some remote centers the indications were for the moderate and severe fractures unstable fractures and open fractures in our days that was the commonest scenario in the government medical college now coming to the surgical treatment as mentioned earlier only five percent of the cases require operative treatment in the tibial fractures however there are absolute indication the tibial fracture with vascular or the neural injury that is the first absolute indication for surgical treatment segmental fracture is another indication inadequate reduction and fourth is the associated knee problem and fifth the associated tibial plafond fractures however nowadays most of the cases are being treated by the surgically now the advantages of surgical treatment includes it is a definitive form of treatment there is no loss of position or shortening and no post fracture deformity and joint movements are obtained early these are the four important advantages of treating the tibial fractures surgically the internal fixation method not so long ago plating as the internal fixation method ruled the roost so much so that the tibial fractures were plated right left and center we were trained in doing that only nevertheless slow close reduction slowly the close reduction and interlocking nailing emerged as the gold standard and pushed the technique of plating into oblivion it appears that with its obvious advantages interlocking nailing is here to stay the conventional nails are the gk nail and the rt nails with the proximal and distal holes the other most important advantages of interlocking nailing is that the fracture need not be open and it can be managed by close technique however the new generation nails are fast emerging 
as an effective alternative as you can see here there are nails with multiple holes in the different planes in order to maximize the options for interlocking and to allow nailing of the fractures near to the proximal or the distal ends. Now vital points we must remember unlocked intermedullary interlocking nail is useful only in transverse or the short oblique fractures, short oblique fractures that too only at the isthmus level. So that time you may not go for the locking. Now these fractures are few and hence it has a limited uses. Caution, anterior knee pain is the most common complication after interlocking nailing of the tibia. Now there is a role of external fixator as well. This is useful in compound fractures of the tibia as it enables to stabilize the fractures and helps to take care of the wound. Now the types of fixators, there are four types. One is uniplanar as shown in this particular picture. Most popular, easy to apply on anteromedial surface with four to six pins. Then multiplanar or a quadrilateral triangular frame, these increase, these increase the uses and then comes the circular frame, elitharo fixator as shown in this particular picture and finally the hybrid external fixator. This combines half rings with the tension wire. Now the complications of the TBL fractures include the most important complication delayed union. Now this is common complication and has an incidence of 1 to 17 percent. If there is a, no evidence of union of the fracture even after the 20 weeks, delayed union is suspected and is treated with the cancellous bone graft. The second most important complication remains the non-union. Now this is a notorious problem usually encountered in the fractures at the junction of middle one-third and lower one-third. You can see in this particular x-ray. It can be treated by electrical stimulation or drizzle internal fixation with the compression plating and cancellous bone grafting. The third important complication is the infected non-union. Now it poses a tough challenge to the orthopedic surgeons and is best managed by Elizaro method of external fixation. Then fourth complication is malunion because of the parallel hinge knee and uh, ankle joint above and below mild union of tibia is an unacceptable problem as it may cause early degenerative arthritis and hence correct your stratomy is the treatment of choice the fifth complication is shortening now this may be due to the mild union or overlap of the fracture fragment less than two centimeter shortening is accepted acceptable it can be uh, corrected by using the footwear adjustment while more than two centimeter shortening may require bone lengthening procedures and finally the infection due to the subcutaneous location of the bone infection is the common complication in these fractures due to the higher frequency of compound fractures following road traffic accidents the other complication includes the compartmental syndrome, joint stiffness, refracture, fat embolism, and clotto due to teethering of the lung extensors or the callus. These are other common complications. Similarly, the reflex sympathetic dystrophy, RST. With this, we conclude our discussion on fracture bone, bone of the leg. Thank you. Thank you very much for visiting my YouTube channel. Please do like it subscribe it share it with all your colleagues thank you